So I have, I have five bullet points. <laughs> did, you, did you make a graph? I wish that I had made a graph. This, this is long, but it didn't take a long time. This is podcast style. Um, it's very off the cuff and it's messy. So, um, no, these are not, this is not my, um, my final thesis. These are the five things every artist should do, but this is like me just like, um, yammering away because I'm having, I'm so passionate about this topic and I love talking about it. That's what this is. Down for points. Number one, get a job. <laughs> okay. Get a job and cut those sideburns, you dirty hippie. So, uh, we're dialectical thinkers and obviously that's like the triggering phrase. That's what probably your, your crazy grandpa Freddie said that, that triggered you. And Oh boy, have I ever heard, um, people kindly and in your interest telling you to abandon the thing that you think is the thing to do and do something that is very contrary to that because it's for your own good. That's very threatening, uh, to the, to the ego. Um, certainly has been for me. One time <laughs> I was playing, we played um, Tilo, who may appear on the show, and we'll probably talk about him a lot, but a friend of mine, uh, we had this band that was called Stein, and we played in Missoula in a garage, even in the winter with the propane uh, heater that got us drunk. Uh, every single day for several hours, we had just like tons and tons of songs. We played at we played in my aunt's garage. We went across the town. We played in my aunt's garage every single day. And the only thing that she ever said, she was like, "I love the music. You guys are awesome. Keep coming out. We're having fun." But the only like tip she ever gave us was like, "You guys should play covers. Why don't you guys just play covers?" Mm. Which is great advice, and it would have resulted in the I type. It would yeah, it would have resulted in the th things that we would have at that time recognized as, as like milestones of success. So it was great advice. But to to us, to me more particularly, it was a very threatening thing to say because the whole point of this band is it's this creative thing where I've written material and arranged it and it's very personal. And it's like, oh, well, could you play some Britney Spears? Because that's what everybody wants. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but that's that's ego. Like um, we started <clears throat> doing covers later and it was and it was that was an improvement. That was a good step. So, you know, be careful about how you take things and understand that the, you know, understand the source and w and why they're saying what they're saying and that it isn't, it isn't the same reason why you would say a thing like that if you were to say a thing like that. For your platform, for your media, you will need budget. Sure, it can be done without a budget, like um, Kevin Smith's Clerks, which had a $30,000 shooting budget, largely for camera and film equipment classic example of like a DIY project. In that case, understand that you have pigeonholed yourself to the niche audience of people who like DIY and under budgeted things. And the styles and values of this niche might not be exactly what you were going for. This was a, this is a constant struggle in like every group I've participated in is like, well, we are DIY. So are we going to act that way? I, I don't, I don't like, I like stuff that's of high quality. <laughs> I, it's not a selling point that it that they didn't have enough money to afford what they were trying to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, maybe it's more of a selling point that it's not like corporate or that it's not as, you know, that whole um, model or marketed or whatever. If you aren't lucky enough to have unearned wealth, we don't know, uh, you will have to either beg or earn money. I'm an introvert, so I earn money. You should live in a home, <laughs> eat food, and get around places. Money. Not open mics, auditions, exhibitions, <clears throat> gatherings, and also don't work at Burger King. You're good at things. Do something that you enjoy, something that doesn't break or corrupt you, something that would really work as a plan B. I've thought a great deal about this, and I approve of plan B. I approve of plan D at this point. Um, <laughs> if you are enslaved to yourself, um, it, to, it, and, and you're, you're like a... a napoleonic leader of yourself towards this like dream just like be careful with that and realize like <laughs> that might be tyrannical like it and you might not ever like make it you might just like end up dying in the mud outside of a castle because that's how things like that can often end you, you talk about digging your feet in like i mean i think any artist has been in that rut an artist is always working at <clears throat> find refine rediscovering that passion that inspiration 
And there will be long stretches where you have writer's block or you have something preventing you from feeling inspired and you still have to do the work. It's very important that you continue doing the work. Um, Stephen King talks a lot about that. I, I kind of, that bring, brings that to mind, but um, yeah, you're going to do, you're going to do stuff that sucks sometimes. You don't have to release it, but if you, if this is what you do as a career, you have to understand that your best work is going to be some percent of all the work that you do. So you're going to do a lot of stuff that seems pointless because it's working really hard on something that will never see the light of day because it's not up to your standards. First of all, who can, Burger King, I'm sorry. Anyone who works at Burger King, you're probably also good at things. How oh, sure. No, no. It, it's Burger is, King as a metaphor for a shitty job that you don't want, that you're not learning. Then say that. Don't fucking yeah. call it Burger King. Anyway. I, look, uh, we're, Burger King's like, not going to sponsor us. To, I have look. no... Are you looking? At what am I looking at? My point. So uh, what I'm saying here is uh, maybe you should work at fast food or whatever if that affords you your sliding level of comfort. We all need to live somewhere, okay? That doesn't need to be a house. Could be a one room in a studio, whatever. We all need to get around. That doesn't need to be a car. Could be a bicycle or just hoofing it. If working at said fast food job affords you the time that you feel you need to dedicate to something, maybe that is the right choice. Yeah. Oh, totally. Maybe it is. I'm 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 making assumptions. And um, did you know that over in, in London, um, they don't have um, they don't have a quarter pounder. They don't call <laughs> it the quarter pounder. Here we go. <laughs> no, I was like I was thinking, like, do they even have Burger King over there? No. Um, I, yeah. No, I'm not saying don't uh, work uh landscaping or something if that is appropriate um you know trent reznor's whole deal was he was he had like a bullshit fucking like corporate factory job or whatever and that really you created his job. sound and his attitude for him you, you aren't know. your fucking khakis and i'll i mean i'll be straight up with you the, the last thing i did before the job that i have now that i'm pretty happy with was i literally worked at a gas station subway and it was a wonderful experience it was a terrible job I had to get up really early. It was really crazy how they treated us. I made like no money, but it was it was like an exercise. It was a thing I wanted to do. And as a result, I really ap appreciate my time a lot more. And I really appreciate a good, constructive, positive learning work environment a lot more. Yeah, I made a couple hundred bucks. So, <laughs> you Got a hundred air. So I'm not saying, you know, don't work at a bowling out, don't do a shit job. I'm just saying like, this is a person who seems well-spoken um people who are into integral are probably like they they probably are pretty smart in some way shape or form and i'm just saying i wasted a lot of time just grabbing grab them jobs because i didn't want i'm an artiste and i don't need to spend all my time applying for jobs and learning how to do all that do do that um because it's saved a stitch in time saves nine like mm -hmm. get a job that's better than the crappiest job you could possibly have Maybe that means waiting tables because you get tips. It's different for everyone. It depends on what you need and what your constraints are. The art has to be, you know, front and center in terms of the goals and plans that you have. But that will probably involve making money. I mean, that will cert that should involve making money unless you just are lucky. And then, okay, we're talking about something a little different in that case. Do it in the best way you can and take a little time to... This is advice I would definitely have given myself everywhere along the way. Like, just take the time to have to work on a square ass normal career to the point where you're not going to be struggling. Um, for a smart person, you can accomplish this in like five years. And if you have, um, like, what would it be like 25 year blocks in your life, that seems like a pretty good expenditure. To, to to worry about that for that amount of time, even if your whole deal is you do art, because mm -hmm. you need to finance that and you need to have things figured out and you need to be not like fighting with people that you live with while this is going on. Just one man's pers one one unthink me's perspective on on the well, uh, three number two. You did number two. You did number two. I see what I did there in the toilet. Number two, also get a job. <laughs> we spend a lot of time finding our thing and who we are as an artist, I should hope. 
That's the bread and butter. Once we have the seed of a thing, now we have to start thinking, how could that thing connect with people? What's the hook? How do I play that up? How do I turn the thing up to 11? How can I afford to do this for a long time? Extroverts seek patrons. Introverts get a job. I did music, so I taught lessons, worked at a rock and roll museum, the Experience Music Project in Seattle Center. I played children's music and volunteer performing events. I worked for recording studios and music venues. When you go after a job somewhat in your field, understand that, again, it will be a bad job. There's plenty of supply of actors, um, actor extras and actors and production assistants, um, maybe waiting tables in Hollywood, a lot of open mic hosts and guitar techs waiting for their big break, a lot of art museum security guards living in their parents' attic. Entry-level peripheral art jobs are competitive and monetary rewards are typically low. As an integral type of person, um, several vertical lines in the green and teal range, there are many things that we have to offer society that are more that they are more willing to pay for than your art at this time. And so I have found that my day job doesn't need to have anything to do with my passions. Um, however, there is no denying that I'd be better at music while sleeping in my repeatedly stolen van if I were still teaching music full time in Portland. As a fan of this channel or an integral thinker, most probably, it is very unlikely that you'll ever be satisfied with doing just one thing for most of your life. But that is how you succeed in an amber orange dominant society. Unfortunately, in order to grow an audience, you really should focus down on the constraint of having a thing. And that thing should be the most appealing thing you have to offer. And you really shouldn't do anything else, at least for now, unless you're still in the pregame phase of figuring out a thing. That all takes a lot of courage and a lot of sacrifice. <laughs> so also get a job in the sense like, um, you should be trying to develop your career into a job. And in the meantime, do a maximum revenue producing for minimum amount of effort job. Like Time. just min max it, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it, I'm assuming this person, you know, if you have graphic design skills, you could do all sorts of marketing, graphic design type of work, web design, even like, I, I would um, say 3D yeah, modeling. Be to the extent of if you're trying to start from the bottom and now be here, you're going to yeah. have that grind be something that someone else is imposing on you being work is you have to follow someone else's vision. Um, and you'll start to dislike what you're doing. You'll lose passion for your passion because it's uh, you're fulfilling someone else's passion. If you're not starting at the top echelon of what, if you're not already monetizing your art, you're not going to start monetizing your art from, from day one. As Adam said, working as a music teacher in a music and also a music museum while working on music, it's going to dull that, that pointed passion towards music because that's all you're doing. And two, two thirds of that whole equation is for someone else not following his own thing. And so as a, as a chef, I would make very nice high-end food using very expensive ingredients. Then I'd go home and if I ate it all that day, it'd be a top ramen. Like I don't want to cook anymore um, because yeah. you've done it all day. And by the time, okay, it's my turn to do things. And this person who wrote in obviously has independent study on my, uh, on top of mind because trying to figure out something and looking up integral and, and stumbling on this took effort effort outside of any, what anyone was asking you to do. And so when I would independent study any, any sort of cooking um, technique or dish or ingredient, it was usually in the morning on my way there. At, at night, I was done. And so I, I didn't do any of that for the majority of my off hours because I had done it all day. So I'm agreeing with you in a, in a sort of roundabout way that if you are planning on working a job just to keep that minimum comfort level or maximum comfort level choosing one in the arena of what you want your freedom of expression art to be can be dulled by having yeah. the same that's image. a good that's a good point and just to kind of buckle it down with with my angle on it too is just to say like that's a feather in your cap if your job is in your field and that will benefit you for sure with the networking and with the skills um, there may be a dulling effect. You may kind of lose passion for it or like feel like you spend all your time doing this and a lot of that time is joyless. And then so you associate that activity with joylessness. That, That's what I'm talking about, yeah. 
that may may definitely occur and i i'm definitely familiar familiar with that the opposite may occur where it will just keep you going about it and you'll just be more plugged into community so it's a thing to assess the model that i that has worked best for me is just like compartmentalize the job is to make money so do the thing that makes the most money during the job time as long as you have to do that so that to do the art take it really seriously do this project um with the budget it needs with the seriousness it needs um and you can afford to do that because you did this job at no point am i the music teacher going to transit am i going to get promoted to rock star that's not going to happen to me so at one point, I'm going to quit being a music teacher and start being a rock star if that's the plan. It's not a career. It's not like a, a movement within no the field. It's a different field. So then I don't need to be a music teacher. I can be a coder because that he makes works. me more money and I it's more flexible with my time. So there's all these things that it works better for. Then I can afford to actually put time into my music, let's say even though I don't fucking play music anymore. <laughs> yeah. So this is, these are things that, <laughs> these are just like, in, this is the tip of the iceberg on all this shit is the funny thing, regardless of how long it is. Um, Bullet point. Number three. Is this not a job? <laughs> okay. I, we kind of discovered that, I think, but let's go. In order to be a truly four-quadrant affair, your art must be not only satisfying and challenging for you, but also for an audience. Both of those are required for art to happen. Some artists, in extrinsically motivated, will forever chase approval and success. And in this case, it's really no different than working any other job. It's about appealing to existing values, not changing perspectives. And so it isn't really art per se, though it is still fair to call a pandering YouTubers such as myself an artist as they create media goods for the purpose of mental and emotional stimulation. So entertainer versus artist, marketing versus art, but is it art? I think only it's, it's only an important question because that again is getting into like, how much is the project itself a job? How much should it be a job? There are ways to understand what will attract and maintain an audience for your art. And this is unfortunately called marketing. Maybe you don't do your marketing or you do it unconsciously somehow. I wouldn't know. But if someone doesn't do marketing, nothing happens. Even a random viral video, which shouldn't be a goal, was marketed as it was prepared and shot and finished and published and proliferated. What I'm saying is some of us aren't good at art and some of us aren't good at work. If you have a distaste for the idea that passion would ever feel like work, I personally just think that's immature. R uh, romantic relationships are work. Family is work. Of course, playing the piano is work. Fool. Anything worth doing is work. <laughs> you know what work? <laughs> Fool. You know what work is, really? It's using energy to get a thing done. Use more energy properly. Get more done. As an artist, as a father, as anything, the whole point of the thing is that you want art to be your work. That's kind of what we're working on. So that's, that's what we want. You want art to use your energy. People who have that hang up like, oh, I, I love cooking and food so much, but I would never work in a kitchen because it would destroy my love for the craft. And so sure. you see how James has completely anticipated the exact point. Huh. Or... I don't ever want to understand jazz theory because that takes away the magic. This rings very false to me, at least as a jazz guy. It's magic all the way down. If you ever find the point where there's no more magic, I'm not worried about you anymore. You're doing great. I need the formula for zero point energy though. And this is not a, to this is not a contradiction of what you said, but only to say, if you, are, if your career makes you do a thing on a superficial level, you'll get bored with it, but you'll never get to the bottom of anything. You'll never exhaust. We don't even know the end of physics. We don't know the end of anything. So don't worry about things not being magical or mysterious. <laughs> that, may be, be, that may be the dulling of it um, <clears throat> as far as a career being in your art field is that you're not allowed to get to the magic anymore. You're not allowed to explore. Yeah. 
And that's what the people are going to pay money for. So there's always a give and take. Product, yeah. Unless, you know, uh, uh, lightning strikes the same place twice. <laughs> you know, so it, it happens. But uh, for most people, you're looking at a choice between doing what you want and doing what they want. Um, <laughs> oh! Oh! You got him? Did he move? And I will say to you, as someone who has only seen the types of people I've seen, that nearly every adult artist I've ever known has a toxic relationship to work ethic at some point in their life. I don't think it's a coincidence. I think art, like spirituality for many, is an escapist fantasy at a certain point. It comes from a fear of being locked into a passionless existence, not being able to express yourself in your life to anyone. And so the media tantalizes us with all these kind of rock stars and celebrities and um, experts saying to us in a subtle way that this could be you. The image that they cultivate must be very much that it is effortless, that rock stars just sit around and screw people <laughs> and be themselves and do drugs, that painters stay up all night at cafes, poets wander around cemeteries, authors sit in cabins for months and months doing nothing but drinking. Like that happens and um, I can find you security guards that sleep on the job. I can find staphylococcus on the counter at the local diner. I can find you corporate executives that literally don't do anything. If the attraction to art is that it won't feel like work, it's way easier to find a fake job in any other industry. So you're still boned there. Get a business degree. If you think you get to be your plain old genuine self and everyone will adore and accept you for who you are. That's just wrong. If you think you need to be an artist to be an acceptable person or to be lovable or to feel proud of yourself, that you owe yourself or anyone else, any achievement, any identity, any meaningful existence, either out of love or appreciation or spite and revenge, it's just a wrong way to approach the whole thing. <laughs> But I think that that's a pathology that artists almost invariably carry with them. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, yep. <laughs> number four. <laughs> what did you expect to happen? Without Here's, no damn job. <laughs> <laughs> Here's where we get into psychology. This is what my grandma Lynn always told me whenever I complained or had the blues. She said, well, what did you expect, honey? Um, out of life. Life is hard in some way for everyone in the world, always, ever. But let's just say if you're an artist and your art is working and it is connecting with an audience and this pays your bills, you are special. You're a very special person. You're yeah. worthy. <laughs> You're worthy now of being the love of someone's life as all artists suffer some type of codependency. Is that what what we were after? Um, parental love, partner love, um, the approval of an organization or entity. Um, is your dream to spend full-time hours painting with a roof over your head and someone somehow responding to what you've done? Or is it to be special and worthy to yourself or someone else? Um, the thing is, those feelings are like anorexia. You can get so thin that you're not medically well and you'll still look fat. The pattern is that you see yourself and you're too fat, no matter what, because some force in your life convinced you of that eternal narrative. And this motivates you to lose weight to a medically unsafe level. An artist is always a perfectionist. They render a vision from the subtle mind into the crude media of the material and transient. You have to be a perfectionist for a very long time to accomplish that. Otherwise, other than cases of maybe like savantism, um, what it means to be a perfectionist is that you're very focused on the deficiency of things. You nitpick, you look at anything you've done and you see the main problem with it and all the little flaws and missteps. And then you zoom out and see the whole thing as it is and think it's pretty cool. Okay, I guess but ultimately misses the mark to some extent. You're coming along always, always though. Real artists tend to hate themselves and everything they've ever done and everything. I'm not saying your art isn't shit because I haven't seen it and probably wouldn't be able to say either way even if I had. I'm just saying even if it wasn't, 
It'll always be shit to you, no matter how much you love it. If you don't have that attitude or disposition, I can almost guarantee you won't have a lasting interest in artistic expression. This is why I'm making assumptions and profiling people as artists, even though we're all so different in so many ways. I tried to think very carefully about statements that would apply not only to myself, but maybe a hundred or so people I've known very closely, uh, total cornucopia of eccentric individuals. I'm speaking to what nearly all of us have in common from my perspective, and I hope that's not too clumsy. The pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, the ever elusive will of the wisp, is that you could afford to do your art all the time and still live a fully responsible adult integral life. If we are so crazy that we choose to be an artist, this should be the choice we're making. I am an employee of my brand. I am the manager producer of this project until I can afford to hire someone else. I am confident now. I don't have to prove to myself that I am worthy of a budget or an audience. This is the work that I am doing and I am capable of it. I don't need anyone's approval or support. I need revenue so that I can pay for the budget that I'm worthy of. Swallow this pill. My goal is to make money. Are you kind of, you ended it? No. Oh, okay. I'm just <laughs> I'm giving you space. <laughs> that's how you oh. ended it? <laughs> no, that's, well, it does end clumsily. Back on the uh, self-deprecating artist, that's, that has 100% to do with being a perfectionist. Yes. I had a boss in my life that uh, was a good mentor, I believe, and he would make me daily text him at the end of my day <clears throat> something good that happened to train myself to not only see the negative. Like uh, I'm the type of person who can spot systematic errors and problems in, in any sort of operation. You usually have an alternative, but when you are like that, um, everything is imperfect everything is there's a negative to everything so a self-hating artist perfectionist on one side self-hating on the other side no those are the same thing this is a key theme on our show and it's something that's pod peopling into me already like i definitely like even just with our our show or whatever it's like i i um i finish editing one i'm like all right yeah we got it or like we finish our recording session and it's like was it perfect I don't know. I didn't ask myself that question. I was like, all right, that was cool. We had good energy. We had fun. It was, it was um, compared to the one we did before. This was better because this and this happened. And I'm enthusiastic that the time after it'll be even more in that direction, possibly. But even if it's not, it was still pretty good last week. I like it. Uh, positivity about your art um, takes courage and vulnerability. It's weird. But to say the I'm a fan of the Unthink Me podcast. I like this. I'm putting effort into this, and I en I enjoy it. I'm a fan of it. That takes courage and and pride. And um, you're making yourself vulnerable to someone saying, "Well, your your thing is shit, so fuck you. You're an idiot." That's what that's that's what you do as an artist is you present your heart and soul to the world. So you got to be real tough. You got to be real sensitive and real tough. Real sensitive, real tough. That's tolerance. It's be accepting. Then you don't have to be either. Well, accepting, yeah, but I mean, there will be slings and arrows for us. And um, yeah, don't get to the point where you're tolerating that to explore in yourself and like find, you know, what is, what is the root of that? And um, a large part of it just being appreciate the milestones appreciate the steps you're taking appreciate the effort as an end in itself because the actual end if it actually did really happen it only lasts that one moment and it was all that build up and about work. two hours it's going to be human shit and here's your medal <laughs> and it's over wow what a bullshit that was <laughs> and then the customer goes and takes a dump mm -hmm. And everything. Um, tiny little, tiny little background buzzer there. We had this friend, mutual friend, when we were younger who had a very funny voice. The character is Bruce and everything. I'm Bruce. His that's voice, what I do. His voice was altered because of all the Agent Orange he was exposed to during Vietnam. It was a little like a slow motion voice, a little bit. I'm Bruce. 
they did not quite, maybe he, not he, fully mouth coordinated yeah he didn't have a lot of cognitive delay he, he wasn't you know mm-hmm. it was literally his esophagus and lungs were just, just all scar tissue yes and uh, a little bit of of drug to the brain well eh. yeah no so a lot of bit of drugs and uh, uh, da- number five never <laughs> ever trust anyone in the arts including art management and production you're dealing mo- uh, almost solely and entirely with eccentric people these people suck at relationships and they are never to be trusted they tend toward clicks they tend toward histrionic and self-destructive behaviors they are often outrageous financial scandal abuse and misunderstanding are extremely common there are a lot of sexual power dynamics in the arts from the garage music scene all the way to mainstream hollywood a lot of relationships are informal. In almost every case, sex in, is involved in some way from start to finish with the product being sold. That might be as simple as if you brushed your hair before the podcast, you would have 1% more viewers over the course of two years. More often, it's like you can bet uh, you can get better gigs and jobs by being more sexually attractive, seductive, and charismatic. And of course... I could make better podcasts if I had a husband to take care of expenses and things around the house. Don't trust anyone. True to an extent, I would say. Trust yeah, that never every- ever trust anyone. Trust that everyone is going to be exactly them at all times. You if can't trust a- Jackie Brown, but you can trust Jackie Brown to be Jackie Brown. That's right. Oh, that's right. That's right. Trust that the liar is going to be a liar. Trust that the empath is going to try to empathize you. Wrongly. Trust that the crazy guitarist is going to bone your girlfriend. Trust. Because you no. know, there were Wayne's World over here. That's how it goes. <laughs> Anyways, this is just based on my experiences with poor bohemian artist types. Really the most lovely and soulful and kind and caring and passionate people in the whole world. You will all sink like rats together in your burning ship, clawing one another's eyes out as you go. I was there. I saw the whole thing. The ones who escaped were the ones who got jobs, humbled themselves, realized that this and not something else is my life. At least right now, this is my life. The whole thing. This is okay. This is all it needs to be. It's not disappointing. It's not nothing. It's not a waste. None of us is anyone who matters. Mattering doesn't exist. It matters to me that some neato European artist on YouTube who does not know me, has no reason to care about me or anything I'm saying or doing, left a long and insightful and personal comment on some of the videos on my neato Unthink Me YouTube channel. And this will be the very first time I address a comment on the podcast. This is a moment in Unthink Me's little imaginary history. It goes in Unthink Me's imaginary little treasure chest. You know, it's a little game that we made up that Unthink Me has a score and that anything that happens matters and that I have anything to say that could influence anyone to do anything worth doing. So we made that all up. It's just content to fill time. Um, I sp- speak for us, I speak for the trees somewhat in saying that we are intensely satisfied with this outcome. We're happy people. And so something as humble as this might be the only thing um, we or you can fit into your schedule and lifestyle. And this is supposed to at least pay homage to scratching the artistic itch because really we could do anything we want with all the time that we have, anything at all. Um, that would include the time here. This can be anything it wants to be. So that's exciting in and of itself. And it's satisfying. Potential energy convert converted to kinetic energy in the present moment by analogy. We would also be satisfied to spend, um, the first half of the session fishing, but it's a day's drive getting over there. So, and the internet's probably not great. How dare you? It's six minutes from my house. I could be there right now. I could take you with me. To the fishing? To the fishing. Yeah, but I got to get over there. Oh, oh, I see. That's that's my point. (laughs) Um, It's uh, understood I'm being farcical with the length of this this comment response, and I hope that finds you all well. I tend to go overboard on my first pass at things. 
do I forgive or abandon this tendency, you see, um, or crank it up to 11. For example, I try it out until I know the answer to that. What else? Anyways, just saying I, I appreciate you and you're very special at Naomi Kaved. I'm totally sure of that. Uh, to summarize your mission. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to drone on on these. For example, <laughs> give said example. Uh, to summarize. <laughs> Your mission, in my opinion, should you choose to accept it, get really good at boundaries, understand role-playing, and that your role isn't to do everything. This particular commenter mentioned being a hermit. What is really the all that we're getting away from when we're getting away from it all? Uh, I would love to be in London right now. What a grand adventurous holiday that would be for me and James. So script script. Yeah. Continue. I don't have a PS. It's all in there. <laughs> maybe the path leads us through the wilderness or maybe the wilderness that we should confront and beat a path through is made up of the people and businesses and community that are around us now. Maybe that's a very personal thing with many variables particularly if you are working on a spiritual practice, the hermit thing might be a good hybrid for an artist. Uh, the, to quote Robert Downey Jr., be your uh, number one fan. If you're, not your number, if you're not a fan, don't ever expect anyone else to be. I think that everyone has a dose of that. Appreciate and be grateful for your art and the experiences you've had for exactly what they were and exactly how they truthfully affected you. This is your treasure and your fuel. If it comes to piss you off enough, it will propel you clear to the moon. You're going to need to be ready for that. However, for most of us, those memories and experiences end up being all that we really walk away with in the end. I hope that you can find it in yourself and possibly some stuffed animals to accept what you have now as the end in itself. If you can't cherish this, even this, you'll never be able to cherish anything. You really don't get to tell the world who you're going to be. You get to listen to the world and be who you are in response to that. You're you now, being who you are, having seen the whole thing and seen that it was good and you approve of yourself and the way forward is going to look exactly like this, plus or minus whatever you do. Satisfied or remedied of the need to be or become someone that you currently are not, the course is clearly to carry whatever is happening now forward. Isn't that crazy? How we never think to do that. Are you are you <laughs> loving it or are you like tedious? Like you're giving me the um nonchalant cat face. <laughs> Was that the end? No. <laughs> I'm just giving you breathing. All right, all right, here we go. To summarize the summary. You don't owe it to anyone to be an artist or succeed at the arts. That is the disease. Never, ever be afraid to say, fuck art. This job is working. This family is working. I can paint in the garage on the weekends, but what did it ever do for me? I don't owe anyone anything. Namaste, friends. Hope at Naomi Kaved doesn't feel incredibly put on the spot, but rather serenaded. So to, to summarize... Mr. Adams and uh, response. Thanks for writing in. Yeah, that's really all I was saying. <laughs> that's really to uh, to distill it. I'm not going to pick apart any of it because you were very poignant. Um, Aww. The, adv the advice I would have reposted would have been the people in your life telling you to quit, empathize with them that they're coming from a standpoint of protecting you in some way. Yes. Um, people have taught me very much to take that more empathetic approach to critics and uh, not take things personally, um, because n the truth is actually worse. It's that nobody actually cares, like whether you're good or bad or whether they approve it. Like they, the, the truth is nobody, nobody walking down the street gives a shit whether you exist or not. No, but only those that love you will tell you to quit. Yeah. Yeah. It's certainly not the case that, that everyone hates you. No, that that's narcissism. <laughs> uh, yeah, again, thanks. Thanks for writing in or for the first time. I don't know. I'm not the editor. Thank you for writing in. Obviously, we take uh, comments seriously. Keep them coming. Uh, it, it, 
hopefully I'll see some of you next time. And I'll pump never... up our algorithm. Give it, push the buttons. When uh, the more you push those buttons, the more, even if you're doing bad stuff, push the buttons and it tells YouTube that people do stuff on this. They, that's what it really needs to know. So we're going to sign off on this epi, the response to our first comment, epic four part mini series. I think we're at four hours or something now. Six. About time to hit the old dusty. I don't know what that was supposed to be. If anybody's a fan of our show and plays death metal, please just take the time to set up your Zoom recorder and do some bullshit that sounds kind of like that. That says, well, about time to hit that old dusty trail or path. What do you, do you say path or trail? Craig says it differently than you do. Well, time to hit that old dusty trail. Great. Anyway, bye. Love you. Bye. Namaste, friends.